Hello there everyone, welcome back to Press for Truth TV. Today is Thursday, September the 6th, 2012, and today I wanted to bring to your attention the fact that there's been a large increase lately in the amount of military drills and, and exercise, training exercises with the military in regards to how to deal with urban civilian populations. Uh, there's a great deal of uh, domestic um, training exercises going on with the military, and especially in the last few months, there's been a huge increase in the amount of these exercises going on. Uh, here is some footage recently from just a couple weeks ago or so of some Black Hawk helicopters uh, flying in downtown Minneapolis. This footage was shot from the 28th fl uh, floor of the Wells Fargo building. And what ends up happening a lot of the times when these military uh, training exercises take place is that the general population in the city is not notified until after the fact. A lot of the times people will end up complaining, they'll call into the, their local media or their local police to say, you know, there's military out here and there's Black Hawk helicopters flying around, what in the world is going on? At which point they would issue a statement saying, oh, well, this is just a training exercise, no need to worry. Uh, meanwhile, the damage is already essentially being done uh, in their minds. It amounts to uh, conditioning people to get used to these martial law type scenarios and seeing military walking around uh, in the streets. This has also gone, gone on recently in uh, Tampa, Florida. Here is a little news report um, talking about some of the recent urban training exercises going on there. Just imagine you sort of come down to South Florida, want to relax, nestle into your bed, and just after you click off 7 News at 11, this happens. It's like a scene out of an overseas military mission, but this is Coconut Grove. We saw like flashes and shooting and they like the Black Hawk had like a, a Gatling gun in the front and you could hear it open up and fire off and and this has actually been going on um, for a little while now in Tampa they've run a few of these drills often led by uh, NATO here's another uh, report on that a tilt road of Osprey that surveys downtown Tampa special forces operators from different countries assaulting mock enemy positions. Now obviously the military needs to train uh, their, their personnel. They have to train for uh, d different types of scenarios. Um, but the problem is a lot of times with these drills that are being conducted, there are sometimes criminal elements within uh, the military that will manipulate these uh, situations. And we're starting to see more of this. We've seen this all over the states, but we're now seeing it more in Canada. Here is an article recently from the Examiner. Uh, NORAD holds hijacking drill with the US, Russia, and Canadian military. Military from the US, Canada, and Russia have just completed joint training exercises for responding to hijacking scenarios similar to the 9-11 terrorist attacks. The training exercise was led by the North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD, the same organization that two years before the 9-11 attacks conducted drills to simulate hijacked airliners crashing into the World Trade Center. Another NORAD simula uh, simulation used the Pentagon as a target. And that's another very important point to make is that um, sometimes these drills, these training exercises, will just so happen to be going on at the exact same time that a real attack is taking place. Uh, that was the case on 9-11. Uh, NORAD was conducting drills uh, involving hijacked airplanes and even attacks on the Pentagon. And so uh, even within the NORAD Space Command, there was a great deal of confusion where people were you know, wondering, is this, is this the drill going on, or is this, uh, is this the real world? In fact, we saw similar scenarios with the London 7-7 bombings, um, where there were drills going on 
at the exact same time, at the exact same places that these uh, the real uh, bombs went off. And I think uh, the, 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 the reason for that is because there's a small criminal elements within the intelligence communities that pull off these black ops, uh, these psychological false flag operations, and it provides for a cover. If you happen to be involved with the black op operation and you're trying to carry out a false flag, well, if you end up getting caught by a member of the government who is like a, a good guy, uh, somebody in the CIA or a police officer or somebody who's not involved, um, then you can just claim that you were taking part in the drill. And, uh, you know, that's why there's, uh, we, we have to pay attention to these things because we've seen these drills coincide with real-time events time and time again. Uh, the first time I started noticing some of these uh, training exercises dealing with civilians here in Canada was uh, a few years ago, actually. Um, here's some footage that I released a few years ago when I came across a uh, training exercise uh, dealing with uh, civilian populations. Um, I managed to find this uh, little hole in this little window here uh, where I got a decent shot of the training exercises that was going on and as you can see from the footage here uh, there was uh, military SWAT looking police guys walking around um, guiding the uh, civilians, as you can see there, with their hands on their heads in this uh, training exercise. So anyways, what I wanted to bring to your attention today is the fact that the Canadian military is now preparing for a rather large military domestic training operation drill, which is going to be taking place very, very soon. This is recently from the Ottawa Citizen, 300 military forces, military police, to descend on Hawkesbury. Around 300 military police from five military police regiment and two military police regiment will be conducting an exercise in Hawkesbury, Ontario, in the surrounding area from September 12th to the 16th, 2012, according to the Canadian Forces press release. The military police officers will take part in the exercise, whose primary goal is to practice the various tasks that would be carried out during actual domestic operations. And one thing that I've been seeing more and more lately is this talk of the military police officers. And uh, we are now starting to see that line being blurred more and more between uh, police officers and the military, and that is a very, very slippery slope. We, we have to remember it's, it's the police who are supposed to be for the people, and it's the military that is uh, meant to fight an enemy. So it's a very, very slippery slope when you, when you begin to blur uh, those lines. And the article goes on to say here, um, Military vehicles uh, consisting of military police cruisers and G-wagons will arrive between September 9th to the 12th, uh, 2012, in convoys of five to eight vehicles from Volcartier, Petawawa, Farnham, and Toronto. The convoys will depart on Sunday, September the 16th, 2012. The site of the Amico building in Hawkesbury will serve as a command post and main accommodations for the personnel. The police operations will include roadblocks, VIP escorts, and even a simulated helicopter crash. In collaboration with the municipalities, the necessary measures have been taken to minimize disruptions to local citizenry. Maneuvers will take place primarily during the day, and specific locations have been designated for the training, namely the town of Alexandria, the town of Planaganet, Plana uh, the town of Papineauville, uh, the Chateau Hotel at Maribel Airport, and the former Volets Grenville building in Grenville. The roads will be used by exercise uh, participants during this period. However, inconvenience to the local population will be minim minimized. Blank ammunition will be used during this exercise as well. 
Uh, so again, this is going on in Hawkesbury. This is from September the 12th to the 16th. This is uh, in and around uh, Montreal, uh, Ottawa. And um, so I wanted to bring to your attention the fact that this is going on. This is going to be happening uh, very, very soon, next week, um, because um, it's, it's of utmost importance that we pay attention uh, to these types of drills. Again, as I said, because of the <laughs> the lines being blurred between military and police, and let's not forget we're in a day and age now where false flag black op operations are a way that the criminal elements within the government gain more control. So if you happen to be in that area, if you live near to any one of those towns, and you think you might be able to get down there, uh, perhaps to catch some footage of the simulated helicopter crash or the military walking around shooting their blank ammunitions, uh, please get down there, uh, check it out. If you manage to get some footage of anything going on uh, there, if you could send it my way, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's a good thing to, to keep an eye on, on these types of events, especially considering the, the history of how some of these military training drills end up. So anyways, guys, that's just something I wanted to bring to your attention today. Once again, if you manage to get down there, get some footage, uh, please send it my way. It would be greatly appreciated. And uh, that is all for today. Thanks for tuning in once again, and I'll see everybody right back here tomorrow.